These new features might take Google's Family Link a little bit closer to being the parental control solution you need for your family. Hi, I'm Michael Prince with BecauseFamily.org and FamilyTechBlog.com. Uh, Google has announced that they've updated Family Link to add a few new features this week. And so I'm going to take you in to look at what Family Link has, what they offer, and what their website says about it, and some of their privacy policies. And we're going to talk about why Google Family Link is a pretty good solution for internet safety for your family if they use Android devices, but it's probably not all you're going to want to use. So here we have the home page for Google's Family Link. You can find this at families.google.com. Obviously, it's going to be in the article that this video is posted on at familytechblog.com as well. There will be a link in the article. So I just want to look at what Google is saying about Family Link right now, what they have available, what would be helpful for your family, what might not be as helpful as it sounds. So let's uh, take a look here, and we're going to start with the overview, obviously. And uh, it starts off by talking about content, uh, viewing the activity, how much time they spend on what apps, which is very important. Studies have shown that the type of time kids spend on technology is more important than the amount of time. So what they're spending time doing is very important. And so these kinds of things, being able to see, hey, they were looking at and taking photos for a while. Oh, they were playing Toontastic 3D. Those things are pretty important versus, or or saying, hey, they've spent all this time on education and only this amount of time on, you know, uh, games or, or watching videos. So you can kind of balance their screen time that way and allow more allow a different amount of time for different things. You can approve downloads of apps so they only are able to download once you've given permission. And then there are apps that are recommended in Family Link that are educational and creative and things like that, like this this show's Marco Polo Ocean or Scratch Jr. Uh, another thing to really pay attention to is, or something that's interesting, is that they now have a way to set limits on screen time per app. Before, it was only basically would shut down the whole phone at bedtime or on the daily limits. Well, now you're able to have screen time limits based on the app that they're using. So if you don't want them watching YouTube after 7, 8 o'clock when you're no longer around them, but they, you're okay with them doing something like their school apps or, or something like that, then you know, you can lock it down per app. That has just been released this week by Family Link. So it's a new feature. Um, you can lock the device down, uh, like I said, for bedtimes, or you can just lock it at will as well. Uh, maybe you have a time for dinner that everybody wants to come together. You don't allow phones at the table. This is a good way to enforce that. Um, and then they've just added uh, GPS features as well. So it says it's helpful to be able to find your child when they're on the go. You can use Family Link to help locate them as long as they're carrying their device. So if they have their device with them, you can track their location now built in with Family Link. Um, so that is the the stuff that they're the overview. Um, we're going to look at the device compatibility because not all Android devices can run Family Link, and that's something that I have covered several times on FamilyTechBlog.com. The fact that there are a lot of phones out there that we've handed down to our kids that they can't use Family Link on because they're older. So you cannot let your kids use Family Link on a phone that is running uh, 7.0, earlier than 7.0. It says devices running Android versions 5.0 and 6 may also be able to run Family Link, but you have to see the help center because some phones are compatible, some are not. Definitely your phone's compatible if it's running 7.0 Nougat or higher. Um, parents, you can run it on old, old phones like 4.4 KitKat, but we're usually getting the updated phone giving our kid the older phone, and on uh, iPhones running iOS 9 or higher. 13 is about to come out. So, um, you know, most of us uh, are, are using the new one. Then it has this helpful little thing to help you see what kind of Android software you're running, which version. So you just open the settings on your device, scroll to the bottom, tap about phone, and you'll see your version number that way. And very helpful that it runs on Chromebook. So some of the features you can get for Family Link also work on Chromebook. And many of the schools that your kids are getting Chromebooks from will allow you to set up Family Link on there. Or they have Google Classroom, which basically is 
what Family Link's settings started on was Google Classroom. So they're able to do some of the same things that you would be able to do. So this is how it would work. That's fine. That's, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. Here's something you need to see. Very important. Does Family Link block all inappropriate content for my children? The answer is no. Family Link does not block inappropriate content, but some apps have their own filtering options. Certain Google apps like Search and Chrome have filtering options that you can find in Family Link. For parents of 13 and older, restrict mode in YouTube is an optional setting that can be used to help screen out potentially mature content. Note that these filters are not perfect. Explicit, graphic, or other content you may not want your child to see makes it through sometimes. We recommend reviewing app settings and setting the tool tools Family Link offers to decide what's right for your family. So it's not a foolproof plan. It's not a quality filter. I'll say that right off the bat. Google Safe Search is one of the weakest filters there are. So this alone, Family Link is a good start and it's a good thing to have, but it's not the the end of your internet safety plan. It's definitely not going to give you everything you need. Um, can families use it? Yes, of course you can. You can run it on your own device. Um, can, you can run, you can use it on iOS. If you have an iPhone, your kids have an Android phone, you can run Family Link from your phone's uh, app to run on, to, to control the, the Family Link settings on their devices. And there's also um, web browser options for, for you to go in and do the settings that way. So here's something that we need to see as well. I'm going to go to a different page here on Family Link. This is their disclosure for parents of children under 13. Here's what uh, Google's privacy policy says about your kid's account. Um, it says once you grant permission, so you're giving them permission to have your kid, for your kid to have an account on Google. Once you grant permission on your child's account, it will be added to your Google Family Group and you'll be able to use Family Link to manage the account. Keep in mind that your child's Google account is like your own and offers access to many of Google's products and services, including general audience services that you may use yourself, such as Chrome, Search, Gmail, Google Play Hangouts, and Google Assistant. Most of these products and services have not been designed or tailored for children, and your child may use them to communicate with others or to find content that you consider inappropriate. Your child can use their account to access and search the internet. They can use the, their account to ser- send and receive emails, chat messages, video and voice calls. They can use it for uh, Google Play approval settings for their account. Purchase and download apps and games, music, movies, books, and other content, which some of that stuff is is controllable through Family Link. They can create, view, share, and receive content, including photos, videos, audio notes, uh, presentations, documents, and more, some of which may be shared publicly. And if they're over the age of 13, they can track health and fitness details and that sort of stuff too. Um, there is a link of tools here to help you with the permissions you can, you grant for your kids. Um, if you approve, you can approve your child's downloads. You can. This is just kind of unpacking the Family Link tools that are available. Um, and then there, so I recommend you check on all of this, especially here, the information we collect, uh, here's the, the deal with kids and data. I've talked about it several times and COPPA or the consumer online privacy or the children's online privacy protection act is a way to protect kids from their data being collected. If they're under 13, as long as their parents have not given permission. So when you use Family Link, you're creating an account for your child and giving them permission to collect some of this activity and some of these information. So they're going to collect information about the apps and browsers and devices your kids are using. They're going to collect information about the activity in their services. They're going to collect your child's location information. Uh, Your child's location can be determined using GPS, IP address, sensor data from the device, and information about things near the device, such as Wi-Fi access points, cell towers, Bluetooth-enabled devices. They can look at other Android devices near your kid's device to find your kid's device. The types of location data they collect depends in part on your child's device and account settings, your child's voice and audio information. We can collect your child's voice and audio information. For example, if your child uses audio activation commands like OK Google, or if they touch the microphone icon, a recording of the following speech and audio, plus a few seconds before, will be stored into their account from any of your child's signed in devices when the voice and audio activity setting is enabled. So they use these technologies to store information, to collect it. It says we do not require your child to provide more personal information than is reasonably necessary to use the Google products and services available for these accounts. Then it talks about how they use it. 
Here it says, Google will not serve personalized ads to your child, which means ads will not be based on information from your child's account. Instead, ads may be based on information like the content of the website or app your child is viewing. The current search query or the current general location, such as city or state, when browsing the web or using non-Google apps. Your child may encounter ads served by other non-Google ad providers, including ads personalized by third parties. So that is interesting because part of COPPA is to not let that kind of stuff, that kind of targeted advertising happen to kids. But you're, you giving permission for your kid to have an account kind of nullify some of those COPPA regulations because you've given permission. Um, so, so yeah, here's another, I just recommend going through this, this, uh, disclosure a little bit because it's going to talk about privacy policies right here on the homepage of families.google.com is where you can scroll down to the very bottom and see the more info disclosure for parents. This is where you're going to see that information about the data that they collect, the privacy policies, and how they handle all of that for your kids. Right here in the frequently asked questions, it says, what happens when my child turns 13 or applicable age? Um, when your child turns 13, they have option to graduate to a normal Google account. Before a child turns 13, parents will get an email letting them know their child will be eligible to take charge of their account on their birthday, so you can no longer manage their account. On the day they turn 13, children can choose whether they want to manage their own Google account or continue to have their parent management for them. If your child chooses to take charge of their account but you still prefer to stay in the loop, Family Link supervision tools can be re-enabled with the Family Link Child Teen app on their device. So you have to go through their device to do it. So that's an interesting thing that at the age of 13, Google has decided because legally they can collect information from your kid, that they're going to put the decision in your 13-year-old kid's hands whether or not you can track and follow their behavior on their phone or limit the behavior on their phone. So um, yeah, that that's something that's interesting. So if you're interested in using Family Link, there's a get the app over here. Um, you can also search Family Link in the Google Play Store and you'll find it that way. So uh, there's a there's a lot of information coming out about Google Family Link right now because they expanded some of their features. It's important to first off check out device compatibility. Is the device that you have compatible with Google Family Link. Second of all, double check that you're okay with all the privacy settings and that it's going to that it's going to fit with what you want uh you know, your your internet safety and digital security plan for your family. And finally, um keep an eye on the emails and stuff you get to see uh, am I okay with my kid controlling their own account when they turn 13? because that's Google's default setting to do that. So there you have it. That is kind of a way to unpack what Family Link offers now and how you can create, uh, hopefully create some better family habits for your kids' devices and how they use it and what they do on there. So um, go check out families.google.com or click the link in this article or the, below the video here. And I wanna thank you for watching the videos and I wanna thank you for listening. And we will see you and uh, you will see me maybe next time on becausefamily.org and familytechblog.com.